Welcome everyone. We have a special edition of the live Q&A tonight. Our family specialist for our residential treatment program, Tamara Cooper, is joining me tonight on this um, to answer questions. Um, and, and they don't have to be just from a partner standpoint. And she works primarily, but guess what? She knows, you know, she knows about this field. So, so this is ask questions. We always work from a pro-dependent lens. So please know, you know, we, we don't label partners as codependent. There is no such thing. I can do a whole spiel on that. Um, because I've listened to Dr. Rob a lot, I've read his books, but, but, but we really, you know, it's about healthy attachment and healing. We want to help people be on a healing path um, uh, and whatever that is. And, and, you know, we've had some webinars recently on should I stay or should I go? And we've got, you know, moving on alone. And this isn't about, we're going to help you fix the relationship. And that's the only thing that you can do. This is what do you need for your safety? What do you need, you know, in order to be able to move forward in a way um, that is, is meaningful. So uh, Tamara is the person with our organization that works directly with the partners. And that is, is meaningful work to provide that, as, that safety. You know, people call sometimes and their spouses have gone to other programs and I go reach out to their family specialist and, and there isn't such a thing. I'm, you know, I, I have yet to find one, you know, um, but, but we understand that with this healing, you know, there needs to be support, you know, and, and it's not, Again, it's not codependence. You're an enabler. You're part of the problem. None of that stuff. It's gosh, this is so painful mm -hmm. and you're doing the best you can. And we want to help support that journey. I will also give a plug. Well, two more plugs. Uh, Tamara co-hosts the um, drop-in group for Betrayed Partners on Wednesdays at 1230 p.m. Pacific time. If you have not done a drop-in group, they're different from this. They are not recorded and they are um, for specific. So Betrayed Partners versus Addicts. We have a separate one for female addicts. We've got a male partners. So we have these categories and we've got moving on alone. Um, uh, so they're different. There's a safe person holding the space at each of those, you know, just to make sure, you know, things go well. Uh, they're all done via Zoom. We've got people from all over the world. So she does that. Separately, um, our Empowered Women's Retreat is going to be offered again January 24th through 27th. It is amazing and healing for, for partners. And, and guess what? We don't talk about him. We're working on healing and um, the, the structure, like the boundaries, internal boundaries, external boundaries. Like what do you need to do to be on a healing journey, regardless of what your addict is doing or not doing? And Tamara and I were talking, you know, like the women look different from the night that they arrive until the night before they're getting ready to leave. Like their faces are softer. They're, they're in their bodies. They're laughing, you know, and, and some of them, you know, have shared that they haven't been able to do that in a long time. So that information is, it is on our, um, on our website and you can always email me Tammy, T-A-M-I at Seeking Integrity, or if you've got specific questions for Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-A -A at SeekingIntegrity.com. We'll make it really confusing for them. So, right. <laughs> so since we don't have any questions right now, I'm going to invite you to share, like, as the family specialist for Seeking Integrity, you know, tell me uh, about how, how you work with partners, what, you know, how you feel your role, you know, is helpful for them. Give it, give me some of the nuances about, I know you're passionate about it. I know you, you know, you, you lead with your heart with, you know, helping partners. So just share a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I've been with Seeking Integrity. Um, I'm, I'm in my, I'm entering my third year. It's crazy. Um, but I came thinking that I wanted to work with, um, the men, um, with compulsive behavior. So I had this whole trick up my sleeve that Aaron would get me hired and I would um, do this work and then move over to that side. Um, however, I started doing the work and um, I'll tell you, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a uh, difficult, probably not the right word. Um, it's, it's painful to hear about, I think. Um, and it was not until I really started thinking about all the, the different complexities that are within betrayal trauma, um, you know, and, and I'm sure 
you know, some of you guys have experienced it, but there is the bottom is falling out um, in, in, in everything that you thought or that you knew in your life. Um, and, and it's, it's not just that because then it goes into, do, do I stay? Do I go? Or, you know, is he going to get better? What, what am I going to do to ensure that, that it gets better? And, um, then there's the, um, you know, so, so that's, I mean, that even just, if you just look at the top level, it's, it's really just kind of your house has kind of fallen down on you. Um, then it's all the emotional, it's the grief of what I thought it was. Um, it's the, the sexual, um, betray, you know, how I, I get it all the time. How would I ever sleep with him again? Um, and these are real life questions because you get married to have this relationship and now all of a sudden everything's different. Um, and, I was really scared at first because, um, you know, you have these partners who have been betrayed and they're fearful and they're not very trusting and they are so accustomed now to really looking out constantly for, you know, what, what are they going to trip over or what bombs are going to go off? Um, and they don't know me at all. Um, and so that part was a little bit difficult for me because I'm used to just, as Tammy said, I really, um, I come in with my whole heart and, um, I, I wasn't exactly sure how to, how to, how to move on it. And I think I figured it out for the most part. It is not one size fits all. Um, every single person's betrayal is very, very different. I think that, um, the, the one thing that, is important, but also can be one of the big struggles is, um, the whole theory of he's either going to do the work and be in recovery or he's not. And nothing you're going to do is going to prevent him, stop him or keep him because if you could, you would. Um, and so allowing yourself to take your hands off the wheel and not look at this and what he's doing. And is he going to his meetings? Is any, is he calling and, and looking at all the things? And I know you're going to say, but it, it, it's how I can, it's, he's never told me before. How would I know? Um, and I get that. But what I do know is that if you do your own work, it won't matter what he does. You'll always be okay. You can get right with you. You can make a decision. You can stay, you can go, um, you can separate, you can, you know, there are so many options for you. Um, but my favorite part is the first time that a partner realizes that they are worth this, they can do this. And they begin to believe me. That doesn't mean you're going to do it perfectly. You're still going to probably want to go safety seek. You're probably going to want to check. I get it. Um, but when they look at you and there is relief on their face because you assure them that, you know, I, I know it's a corny saying, but like on your worst days, 100% of the time you've made it and you're going to make it this time um, and being able to hold space. Um, and when I'm at the... Um, retreats, getting to hold them in real life. There's nothing in this world I'd rather do. I still don't believe I'm paid for this. Um, do I think I fix everything? No, I don't. Um, do I think that sometimes, even when you don't know what to do, when someone comes and sits beside you and says, you don't have to sit in this pain, you don't have to sit in this pain today. You can tell me all about it. Even that is really, really important. Um, being the container, being a safe place, um, and validating everything that, that, that someone is going through when they're in that really, really painful place is super duper important to me. Um, and so, yeah, I also run group with the, the gentleman inside. So, um, I have a lot of years, um, um, I'm in recovery and I have a lot of years, um, where I worked with, um, addiction. Um, so I'm super passionate about that. I do try to do, um, psychoeducation, um, as much as I possibly can with the, um, partners, because again, I don't, I, I don't think if you have, if you don't have an addiction, how would you know what it feels like? How, how would you ever know? Um, and 
you're overhearing about what your person has done because you've heard lies, defense, you know, gaslighting, um, you know, denial, all of that. But when someone else can kind of help you and just give you some awareness around it or some knowledge around it, um, I do feel like that is helpful. I, I feel like that is both helpful for our guys who are who are trying to get into recovery or who are in recovery. Um, and it's good for the partner kind of to learn about it. I love what you were just sharing about. We say, you know, nothing you did or didn't do caused this. Nothing you do or don't do can fix this. And and I use the term, you know, bubble wrap. I hear partners that want to bubble wrap their addict, and you know, so that mm -hmm. then they can't do this again. Or the big question of why is he doing this? And I'm like, the why is. And Dr. Rob says this too. You know, the why is of interest, but it isn't the most important question. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do I need to do today to to not act out? And how do we move forward? That's, you know, those are way more useful, you know, uh, like it's layers of stuff. Um, I think it's, you know, I, I know, I know, I don't even think it's, I know that partners, you know, get so dysregulated, you know, by the, the addiction and then by the focus on the addiction. So, so I, I see you as being able to kind of scoop them up, you know, and hold the space for them, you know, go like, we got you here you know, and, you know, and for the guys that are in our program, you know, the team, you know, we trust the team to do the work with them. Ultimately, though, you know, there's no guarantee. You're right. You know, there's no guarantee. I don't guarantee, you know, I've, I've been in recovery for a while. And I, I never promise anybody that I won't, you know, go back out, I do what I need to do today to take care of that, you know, and, and I use my recovery tools, you know, the, the more difficult the situation, the more I need to lean into my recovery tools. And I think it's really important, you know, from that standpoint too. And you said, you know, you know, stay or go and all that. Um, I will point out that on a previously recorded webinars, they, they go on our website. Um, I had uh, Deborah Doak, D-O-A-K, who came on and did a, a um, she does mediation. It was really good. Um, uh, but it's like, you know, and she helps people and she's full. And so this isn't an endorsement of her, but she, she has other people that she works with. But that webinar was really useful just to get kind of a, oh, you know, and then, you know, um, uh, Kristen Snowden and May did a, should I stay or should I go? You know, and, and like lots of people, well, I can't leave, you know, I'll lose all of the financial. Debbie Doak, Deborah Doak um, was really good about like she worked with one partner and it was like, well, it, I mean, it was like, if you save $200 a month on your budget, you, you, you could leave and it wouldn't affect your lifestyle. And it was like, oh, you know, I mean, it was something like that. I can't remember. She shared the example. So that's probably wrong, but, but the, you, know, the, you get the concept. It was like, they were very close to not having to give up anything in their relationship, but the fear, you know, and we see this all the time, Tamara too, is, and yes. we've got some questions, but it's the fear, you know, it's the fear of the unknown, the fear of what's going to, you know, so the more that you're willing to, you know, come here, we try really hard to have great resources. We'll tag on um, that October uh, 30th. Um, we have our, COO who happens also to be an attorney and he's going to come on and, and answer some general questions about, you know, the legal things. So, so we're trying to make sure that we've got real information that is useful, you know, not just hypothetical stuff that you, that can point you in a direction so that you can do what you need to do to take care of you in all of this. And that's for the partners, but, you know, I mean, my, my goodness, I, when, when people, you know, all of the endorsements on our website, I've, I've shared with this, those are unsolicited. People write us thanking us, and it can be the addict partner or the betrayed partner, and they are sharing. And I always say, you know, thank you for this, made my day, usually with tears running down my eyes. And um, <laughs> may I post this on our website anonymously, and they mm -hmm. give me permission. So this isn't, you know, us going out and going, hey, give us a five-star review. This is just, you know, uh, gratitude for the journey. Do our guys that come to residential treatment do it perfectly? No, we don't do the life perfectly. Like this is, a, you know, how do we get through this human humanness, you know, with integrity? And I love that our company is called Seeking Integrity because we strive for that personally and, and we want to help others be on that path as well. So, okay, we've got questions. So we could talk all night. But, all right. The first one. So if you're looking at the Q&A, you should be able to see. Addict here, when answering questions about my past acting out, I tend to minimize first by 
explaining, oh, we know about how this goes. Mm -hmm. My reason, then the actual answer. I want to get better at answering first without minimizing or qualifying my answers. And then if asked to explain or whatever, but my go-to is to minimize first. Any help to change this habit? So, um, I mean, I will tell you that if um, you ask me if, I can't even think of, if I went out to lunch today, and instead of telling you, if I went out to lunch today, I say something like, um, well, I mean, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I mean, I, I have in the past, I mean, I've, I've gone out to lunch in the past instantly. Tammy's like, why, why are you telling me that? That doesn't, and you're looking matter. away. You got some, you got yeah. some good tells. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh yeah, I know this. I know that. Yeah, move. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I would say, um, and yes, there is a part of this that is a habit. Um, I will say it took me um, th almost three and a half years to get um, more than 30 days sober. Um, and a lot of times I would be asked, um, what happened? Why, why did you, you know, how did you relapse? And my, and my sponsor would want me to like break it down. And I'd be like, I don't know, like the day got off track. Um you know, what, whatever happened, but I wouldn't really have a reason. I had no reason. It was like, that's just what I did. Um, and I'm not making an excuse for you, but what I'm saying is once you realize that, oh, this is my habit, now it's up to you get, to get to work. So how would you get to work? Well, the very first thing I would say is sit back in your chair, <laughs> get your, feel your spine in that chair, put your feet on the ground. It is okay to say, Hey, Tammy, can you give me one second? I just want to kind of think about this before I answer. If if Tammy and I are in a relationship, she wants me to answer this in a very thoughtful way, especially if we have a history of me lying about going out to lunch. And so when, when I do that, I might sit back and say, hang on, Tammy, give me one second. I just want to kind of get this together in my head. I'm not trying, you're not trying to do anything because now you're going to come with the answer. So the, the first thing is you got it. It's the awareness. The second thing is it sounds so much like old behavior and you set yourself into the tailspin. I mean, because first of all, you, you probably trigger her. Now she's ticked at you and you're sitting over there like, well, wait, I was getting to it. Um, and now you've wasted this time. And there's kind of a, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect here. Um, you know, when I first got here, um, there was a, a different therapist who worked here, Karen, and um, she was the first person I ever said, say, or heard say, excuse me, um, tell the truth and tell it faster. Um, I always said, I will be impeccable with my word. So if I realized that I had said something wrong or or misquoted myself, I would go back really quickly. As you learn to do that, your wife they want that. I mean, I was laughing yesterday because I was like all the, all the women that, or men that want to know the truth, um, not, not what was, you know, it doesn't have to be good or bad. They just want someone to be forthcoming. When you begin to be forthcoming, the connection that you create, because there's honesty, you're impeccable. Look, even if the answer is Tammy, I lied. I did not go out to lunch today. I feel really, really bad. I'm I'm struggling and everything in me wants to tell you something differently, but I care about you and I'm trying really hard. Do you see how different that looks? I'm meeting her with my heart. I'm meeting her with the truth and I'm saying less words. I always say whenever I start to think too much, I've got too many words going on in there. Like there's a train wreck happening and I'm about to go offline. So if you can just do that, um, the only thing I will say is I'm a little bit um, con concerned is probably not the right word, but I'm just curious, I guess, about what the questions about your past are, um, only because that can be a little bit um, of a trickier, um, uh, trickier place. Um, and, and I'm just saying that because that's more like disclosure type stuff. Um, and so you want to be careful there. So I don't want to mislead you. I wanted to go back to that. If it is just questions that maybe you get defensive over, stick to my first answer. If this is disclosure type stuff, there are ways to do that. It is 
perhaps we should consider doing a therapeutic disclosure um, because I want you to know the truth also. But if I do this answering questions as you ask them, I'm doing trickle disclosure um, and that's death by a thousand paper cuts. It's really, really painful. Even though the partner is going to say, I don't care, I wanna know, I don't care, I wanna know. We have seen them after they've said, I don't care, I wanna know one too many times and then they're destroyed inside. I mean, they're really, really shredded because they don't know when it's gonna stop. With the disclosure, it's set up in a therapeutic setting so that you know everything, hopefully everything is said in the disclosure it's processed with two therapists, like it's done in the right way so that there really is this way to move past it. So there's a weekly peer case consultation group for professionals that do this work. Guess what the number one topic is among the professionals? Disclosure. So I'm with Tamara. If this is about, you know, the acting out behavior or past or why did you do that? That, that that's a question that you know I know you want to know why I want to provide you that safety the, the thing um, I would say to you is like when you're not in one of these moments I would love for the two of you to have a conversation of I tend to go to a lie in defensiveness and I don't want to do that so mm -hmm. I'm going to be thoughtful I'm going to preface it with I need a moment and and you know even if I need 10 minutes I'm going to go write it I'm going to go journal about this you know and see so that I can come to you and and say, you know, what is the truth? But if this is the gory details, I mean, the you know, a, a formal therapeutic disclosure is not the gory details. And we get partners that are like, well, you know, what about this? And what about that? And what about that sexual act? And what did I, and all of those things? Now, there are some things, you know, and but again, in a formal therapeutic disclosure, if, you know, if there was sex in your house, your car, or, you know, with a friend or relative, you know, I mean, people that they're going to see, there are some, some very specific things that they need to know. Again, get the help of two therapists. But if it's just the gory details, or, or if it's just like, well, what about this? Well, but what about that? You know, um, there can be 150 questions, and you answer them, there's gonna be 150 more. So, so it, one of the things I say often is, what is the goal? What is the goal? You know, if the goal is to heal the relationship, then working with two qualified professionals to help you find a path forward, uh, a spouse holding healthy boundaries with, you know, what do I need? But also the added holding boundaries of like, well, I know you say you want to know, but you know, all of the professionals are saying, please don't do that. It makes it worse. And I want us to be able to heal the relationship. So as hard as it is for me to not tell you things, you know, I want to do this with a professional so that we make sure that we are working towards healing the relationship so but the yeah the the well you know, I mean like I get the visual of the you know the five-year-old kid that got caught you know and like but 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 but, but you know and and, and we're mm -hmm. not five you know yeah right. we're not five so yeah. we have to learn to grow up and take responsibility for our actions we don't minimize but we also don't take responsibility for things that we aren't responsible for so so at the end of the day I mean that's the difference and and you know it's such a different way of living you won't do it right and you're gonna you know but that's what amends are for so I hope you're working the 12 steps I you know I personally am a major fan and and if you're doing you know, steps four through nine really help you clean house you know and then a formal therapeutic disclosure is not what you wrote down on your fourth step that's different you know get help you know we got lots of help okay Tamara the next one how do I get past my anger? Husband is in good recovery and we are currently working on a disclosure to kids. Ooh, and it's making me so angry having to put them through this. It's so unfair. So the first thing that I would say is um, it is unfair. I mean, I, I don't think there's anyone in the world who says that, that it is not really, really unfair and sad. Um, and Anger is the, you know, that's a secondary emotion. So I'm, I'm sure underneath there, you feel sad and you feel scared. And I'm just sorry that you're going through that. As far as, um, I don't know your, uh, again, I clearly, I want to ask 74 more questions to anyone's one question. So um, I don't know about the kids. And so I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to really talk about the anger. So um, in part, um, the, the reason that I um, first brought up that, that there was a possible, a possible need for this intensive for the women was because um, 
I guess I had watched kind of what happened for a little over a year before I approached, um, you know, Tammy and Aaron and, and some of them about, about the idea of this intensive or this retreat. Um, and, and the re the number one reason was because we would get them through, um, inpatient treatment with their husband, we would leave, they would do this, um, they would do their, have some boundaries at least set to, to move forward with it. And then, um, they would reach out to me and they would say, I'm so angry. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very upset. I, I cannot do this anymore. And I'm, I'm everything he says, like I'm, or I'm being angry. I'm being mean. I'm being reactive. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, falling apart with this anger. It's eating me alive now. Um, and so I kept thinking like, there is work. I knew, I know that there is work to do to get you to a place. Um, I would not even, I, I did say um, initially that it was grace. Like if you could just have a little bit of grace for them to be able to do the work. I, I actually kind of changed my mind on that. I don't know that it's really about grace. I really think it is more about doing the healing work with yourself. Um, and oftentimes, and, and, you know, sometimes th this is talked about other times it's not and, and, and it can be a little bit of a sensitive thing that I'm going to say here, but what I find out when I get to work with, um, betrayed partners more in depth is that some of the worst pain comes from betraying themselves. And that is the, I didn't trust my gut. Um, or I didn't, I, I kind of knew something was going on and I, and I let it go. Um, I listened to things that I knew were not actually facts. Um, and I continued to go into this relationship knowing that it wasn't what I thought it was anymore. Um, and there is this feeling of, and that was what I could relate to. Um, I'm a female. Um, I have betrayed myself for men before and the anger that I used to have at myself, um, was, astronomical. Um, and I can tell you what I did that worked for me and what we do at, at the intensive. Um, so one thing I love, I love anything that is somatic. Um, I like anything that gets you in your body, um, because we leave our body so much. Um, I'm like, my mind's going all different ways. So I'm like, what, what else should I tell them? Um, so, um, obviously if you can, if, you know, getting a CSAT, um, finding support, drop-in groups, um, places where you can feel validated. It is not always the um, conversation that you can bring to lunch or dinner. Um, so finding the people that you can do that with. Um, Self-compassion. Um, look, you didn't know because you've never been here before. Um, you didn't, it, there's, there's nothing that, that, that is worth beating yourself up over. We're in the here and now, whether you made mistakes, whether you feel like you betrayed yourself or not, we're here now. And the best thing you can do for yourself, because, you know, it's a long road ahead, um, is to begin to kind of build the strength within, within yourself. And look, as corny as it sounds, telling yourself, like, we're going to be okay. I mean, it like, why? I don't know why. It, like that chokes me up even saying that right now, because I can imagine the faces of you um, partners just so afraid that the nightmare is not going to end. And again, you're not going to have control over what, what, what is over here. What you do have control over is this right here. Um, so meditating, journaling, um, um, exercise, yoga, any moving your body all around. Um, and I will tell you what, what happens to me. Um, when you get into the anger is that's a defense. So it, when we're in that, we can assume that you're in the, you're kind of in the fight, you're in the fight or flight or freeze. Um, and when you're there, you're not up here where you can use your logical thoughts. Um, and so the anger is what kind of, it pops off. It comes really, really fast. It's just kind of like um, what I was saying a minute ago of like, you don't even know how it happens. Um, you know, and, and if you can do some simple things, like when you get angry, um, especially with, with kids going to be involved, hold ice cubes in your hands. It takes that part of your brain. It, it pulls you back out of that. Um, what you're constantly looking for is you want to be in um, the the sympathetic rhythm. So you want to be in your body doing what your body does that we never even think about. Um, the other is that um, the parasympathetic, which is where we're, 
oh my gosh, you know, I cannot believe this. I cannot. And then that, that, that kind of feeds that fire in you. And we want to cool that down. So even, I know people will say like, take a deep breath. Um, I encourage you to take a deep breath. The difference is when you exhale, blow out longer. That helps you get out of this part of your brain and back up into here. Um, and I know I want to be making decisions, especially when I've been hypervigilant from this part of my brain. You know, this part of your brain doesn't know that there's a future. It has no idea to only every, it filters everything through the past. So like if, if you all talked about disclosure once, your brain, it, it instantly, you know, the feeling, I don't know, everyone's going to have a different feeling, but like you might get your hands might grip or you might get hot or you might get cold chills or your heart might start pounding. When that begins to happen, I always say that's kind of like your sirens. That's your warning signals. When those warning signals are going off, that's when you're called to the post. So when that's happening, your brain suddenly thinks, or the amygdala, it thinks we're going to die. So it doesn't think someone's going to tell us a lie. It doesn't think someone's going to um, argue with us. It, it, and it definitely doesn't think we're going to be okay because it only goes off the past. So if in the past you stood up and screamed and yelled and raged and, and you know, hit your um, couch or something, it is going to say, cue that, because it thinks that's what saved you. That's why you need to be back up here, because then you're clear headed. You can have thoughts. Look, anger is come, come to the retreat. You'll see. I love anger. If it's dealt with, in a way that benefits you. So that is the thing. When you're going to yell at him, I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to go to his amygdala. <laughs> Nothing good is going to happen. Um, but if you could talk to him from this place, because I could still say to Tammy, thinking about having to do this, Tammy, it kills me. And, and it, it makes me really, really sad. And I'm not trying to pull you into shame. I just really needed to say that. Tammy's going to show up for me much differently than if I'm like, I can't believe you. Now we're ruining our kids and dad, you know, all this, um, which is what you feel. It's valid. I'm not saying it's not valid, but there are other ways to release that. So I think, I think I covered all of them, um, you know, really and truly though, it, my, my freebie and the one that you can do the most is to take care of you. You are hurting right now. That is when you're angry, we know that I just, even if you can just, and I know it sounds corny, but just hold on to yourself. You know, I, I, I will hold on to myself and soothe myself because right now I'm in a lot of pain. I've never been here. I don't want to hurt my children. I'm sad. I get it. So hold on, hold on, tell someone, you know, your trusted people say it. I'm really, really sad because then you can clear some of that out. I, I lighten the load if I call Tammy and tell her. And I'm going to, I'm going to flip to the other side of this and I put some resources in the chat. So Dr. Ken Adams wrote a light, a light in the dark, and he did a podcast with Dr. Rob and it's about it adult children of sex addicts. You know, there's an, or, there's 12 step for adult children of alcoholics. There isn't yet, you know, for sex addicts. Um, Dr. Rob, and you can go back and listen to the re webinars. Um, I'll parrot him a bit, but like, I'd be very clear on, you know, like, if it's going to make the news, you know, if something's going to happen and the kids need to know, or sometimes we get kids that have found it on the technology, like, you know, dad grabbed their you know, their iPhone and was using that. And so then all of a sudden there's porn or there's an affair partner or whatever, you know, that's different, but to go and intentionally tell, um, no kid, I, like no kid wants to know about their parents' sex lives. It's okay to say we're struggling right now. We're doing our work, but I would invite you to talk to your qualified professionals about this before you sit down and have this. I mean, they you talk about dis discovery for you. Can you imagine what your kids who are like, this is my parents. And um, so if there's a reason, like I said, I mean, we, we get lots of people that are, it's, you know, uh, signs up or in the yard because you know, that he's a cheater. I mean, whatever, you know, so, so I would be very cautious um, of, about what you say. You can never take it back, you know? So once it's out, you can't take it back. 
but okay. To, um, I, I had one partner, I was doing a drop-in group um, one day and she said, you know, we told the kids that we're working on bettering ourselves. And I was like, that is brilliant. And isn't that what we should all strive to do? Um, but I would also like, you know, if you're going to tell the kids, make sure you've got um, qualified professionals to help them work through this. Um, and ideally, if you're really going to do this, make I would do it with the help of a, of qualified professionals to support the entire family structure because because you know discovery is is really horrible for partners and and you know I mean my whole family is fracturing with all of this stuff is you know, how kids feel so so it's you know there's resources I would invite you to you know consider what the goal of telling them is. You know, and we get partners, I, I, I hear it often, well, they need to know because I need help. And I'm like, it is not our mm. children's job to support me. I need to, I need a model. I'm taking care of me. We're, we're having a rough patch, you know, we're bettering ourselves. We're working on bettering ourselves. We're going to be doing this. So you'll, you're probably picking up on some tensions and, and it's okay. It's not about you. You know, it, like we we are doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves so um uh, it, i mean it's it and depending on the age i mean it, it's worse at some ages than others but you know even adult children you know don't you know they don't need to be your support so okay next question tamra how do i bounce back <laughs> yeah, there's no bouncing in this stuff so i'm gonna start what and so <laughs> How do I bounce back when my husband has broken one of his commitments and then reacts very defensive and deploys all acting out tactics he, that he uses when um, to have control? And the deeper question is, I know um, how to help myself regulate, but now because I have learned so much and I'm so deeply into my recovery journey, I can see all of, of this behavior in real time. I'm not confused as I was in the past and somehow having this research and clarity is making the episodes of acting out even more disturbing um, and hurtful on an intellectual level. I see and understand, but my body feels like it's receiving a sonic blast and the whole body keeping the score happens. And I end up in pain in my knees and legs when I finally lay down to go to uh, sleep, feeling stuck in my bed the next morning and really struggle. I, I am at a crossroad or oh, am I at a crossroad in my healing, seeing it, but not being able to keep my body from feeling what it's receiving? How do I get past this? This is, this is a great question. Thanks so much for sharing this. And I love that you, you're talking about, I'm doing the work, but it's also causing this, like, now I see what's happening in real time. I'm not, you know, I'm not in denial on, you know, uh, on this, but in my body's picking it all up. So thoughts. Yeah. Um, so the very first thing that I would say is I do think that this means that um, I would I would tell you um, if you if you were my client, I would say, I think you're healing. Um, and um, that is both um, great news and also hard news because you're looking at what's going to happen. Um, so here's here's my my very first thing. If I go all the way back to the top. And he's, um, he's breaking some commitments. You didn't say exactly what, but he's breaking some commitments. And then, um, when maybe when he's asked is what I'm reading, um, then he's going right into his whole, all the old former behaviors. Um, so if, if, if you're, if you're in it with him and you're, and you're still trying to get him to recovery as you're as you're getting into yours and, and trying to watch him do his work. Um, it's to me, it's boundary time. Um, I don't, I don't even know of anything else that would really help it right here than boundaries. And, and here's what I mean. Um, so if it, at one point you set boundaries, um, and, and I'm hopeful that you did, um, then I would say that, um, part of what needs to happen now is whatever the boundary was, um, we need to up the ante. Um, so what, what I mean by this is let's say that the boundary was, I don't know what his commitments are. Let's say that, um, um, I'm trying to think of something he had, um, maybe not been going to meetings. Um, so he's, he's not being honest about going to meetings. Um, if that, if, if I bring it to him and he reacts defensively, OK, we are no longer on, you know, that's not on that's not even honoring kind of like 
um, the, the communication laws in a marriage, because now I'm trying to ask you a question about maybe boundaries that we set and you're not honoring it. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to move away from you. What does that look like? Well, for everyone, it's different. And I would never tell you what, what it's going to look like for you, but it may look like, um, um, you know, out of, out of the bedroom separation, it could look like, like an in-house separation. It could be out of the room for 24 hours. Um, it could be out of the house. It could be out of the house for a week. Um, and I would tell you, I don't, I don't use it as a punishment. It's a consequence because if, if you, if you had said, and I'm assuming because these are commitments, I'm assuming at some point he was agreeable to these and he's no longer, um, if, if he's no longer looking at, you know, how do I, how do I fix this? What am I, what am I doing? I need to get back in this. If that is not what you're receiving when he's being in, I, 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 again, I, I have more questions than I do answers because I'm like, well, are you catching him? Is he telling you? Um, there's all these things that I'm wondering, but I'm just going to assume um, that he's acting defensive, that you're questioning him. And if his answer is, again, I go back to what I just said. If Tammy asked me about lunch and I go straight into like, what do you mean? I mean, I, I mean, why are you asking me about my lunch? I mean, you know, I have lunch every single day. If I go into that, then what Tammy could approach me with is something that looks more like this. Well, I thought that we had a commitment around it. So I was just trying to check in about it. If I go right into that same spiel, I would love for Tammy to close down the conversation with me. Um, and I would. Yeah. yeah because yeah. at that point, I'm, I, I'm not, this isn't a productive conversation. You and I are not getting anywhere. Um, and so that, that is my, my, and I think the reason that now your body feels it is because you're, you're staying more in here. Logically, you know, what's going on. You're wide awake, eyes wide open, and you're watching. And if you're not going to honor this, that we're not in a reciprocal situation now. Um, this is me doing my work and I'm sorry, I don't know if I should say this, but to me, he's either going to get on board, honor the commitments, show up for you, because it sounds like you're doing your work for him, um, or he might be out of the bed, he might be out of the house, he may end up out for a good amount of time. I mean, I hate to move further than that, but the boundaries are about you, and you do not feel safe. Everything else from there is up to you. How do I keep myself safe? If you're not going to do it, what what will I do to keep me safe? Um, and so I, I don't know if that answers you. Getting past that, I don't think you're going to get past that. Um, the getting past that is you're either going to set your consequence, walk it out, and understand that you did the best thing in the world for you, um, or he's going to see it happen and then say, oh, shoot, I better start honoring these commitments and not showing up with this defensive stuff. Um, to me, it's one of those two things are going to happen. The good news for you though, is this is healing. That is healing. You're wide awake and you're in there right now. That I, and I'm, I mean, I don't know you, I don't know who you are, but I am so proud of you because this is the hard work, but this is the work that will save you. This is the work that says no matter what, you're going to be okay because you're your mind and your body are starting to talk to each other. And that means you're alive and well in there. So good for you. I'm really proud of you. So I have a couple things on this one. Um, Troy Love and I actually did a role play on this where he did something. He was being all defensive. And I, mo I modeled that. It was like, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, that that is not my reality or my experience. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go take care of me. And like, you know, I didn't get up and walk off the zoom call, but you know, we, that's what we modeled of. Like, you know, I'm not, part I'm, I'm not buying into your lies. I'm not going to listen to the defensive, I mean, but what Tamara was talking about of what is the consequence? Cause if he did not honor his commitment, so if, what was, you have to have a consequence and, and it may be, I'm moving to the other bedroom or, you know, if, if you are unable to do the things that will help us build trust and, and, you know, come closer together, then I'm going to go over here and take care of myself. And I'm going to go out with, you know, I'm going to go to lunch with my girlfriends, you know, I'm going to do the things that will take care of me. Um, uh, so that I'm not caught up, you know, I'm going to go regulate, you know, me. Um, and I meant to say this with the last one too, journaling. Um, I, I like, there is so much research on journaling. And, you know, when you're having that, I would invite you to just write, just write and get it on paper. Cause then it's not, 
like it helps you get it out of your body. It helps you get it out of your mind if these things are ping ponging around. So, so journaling, but there's no balance. I, you know, I started off with that. There's like, this isn't about balancing that back. You're being intentional of going, like, I'm, I'm healing. He's still floundering. You know, he's still going to his, you know, his shame and, you know, cause because def- being defensive is, is shame. You know, there's, I, I don't want you to know the truth. And so I'm going to try to you know, do it and it, def- it never works and addicts still keep trying. So, I mean, it's, it's insanity. This whole disease is insanity and you don't have to buy in. You don't have to, your happiness and joy are not contingent. They don't have to be contingent on what the addict is doing or not doing. You know, if he's doing things well, great. And if he's not doing things well, that does not mean that you cannot have joy in your life and safety, you know, but, but with boundaries, and we talk about this a lot in the empowered women's retreat, um, uh, it's internal boundaries and external boundaries, but, but it's not a boundary if it's, you know, I've given him a list of rules or he's made commitments. No, you know, like with a commitment, it'd be like, well, you know, I, I would invite you to go talk to your, in fact, I think I said that to Troy, I, you know, you may want to call your sponsor and you you go to a meeting and, you know, talk about this and I'm going to go over here. But, you know, if he didn't honor a commitment, I, oh, that'll be, you know, good for you to talk to with your therapist, you know, or a sponsor and like just not buying, getting sucked in the vortex of, you know, of his defensiveness. You know, I often use the, you know, it's a negative two step. You do this and then I do this and you do this and I do this and you guys can wear a pattern out on the floor and nothing changes. You're changing. You are, you are, you are getting different. So you're starting to change the choreography. We'll see if he's able to, you know, to follow along. And he may be, you know, he may need some dance lessons, you know, he may need some extra help to, you know, get in a different place. But my experience is when partners are able to hold that safe space for themselves, they're less reactive, they're less dysregulated. Um, and and then the addict starts going, oh, wait, that's not working anymore. Oh, you know, and they you know, they, they have to start to change, you know, or not a a couple other things. I know we've got more questions, but, um, I, um, one of the things that partners never, you you can never understand this. Your brain would never, you would never do this stuff. Our brains think different and it's not, I'm not making excuses at all. I'm just telling you, our brains think different. We can learn to think better, but I, I was traveling this weekend and I went to a 12 step meeting out of town and it was a really good meeting, but you know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, people are sharing and it's the insanity of this disease. I mean, Tamara just shared, you know, it took her a while to get more than 30 days. That's insane. Like not, I mean, it's just addiction. It's like that we go, Oh, I start to feel better. So I'm going to go do something that's going to, I mean, it, I, it, our brains are just, you know, that doesn't give us an excuse not to learn how to do things differently, but that, you know, that is how it is. You know, Dr. Eddie Caparucci did a um, webinar in September of last year, and he quoted Dr. Gabor Mate um, mm. about, you, you can't make something unhappen. So what has happened has happened. How you choose to move forward with it is your opportunity to either continue to traumatize or to learn to heal. And you are choosing in the, from what you're sharing to move forward. And so, but yeah, I mean, kind of thinking of it is, you know, you've been in ICU getting help and you're going to get better, you know, but it doesn't happen overnight. Um, somebody sent me an uh, Instagram um, and it was a, a glass, probably of red wine, doesn't matter, but you know, they set it in the sink and then they put the faucet on, they filled it up with, with wine, red wine, and they let the faucet run. And it took a while for the water to turn clear. And it's kind of the analogy of how long it takes to heal. And I was like, I, I actually love that visual of like, here's what it looks like. And it's, and you know, the color was starting to fade and starting to fade and starting to fade, but it took time you know, even with a full faucet running on it. Um, anyway, so, so there is healing possible and, um, uh, we'll go to the next question. See, I told you we could talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I want to, I'm going to pop to the next one. One kid overheard and told the other kids, yes. And you are, so I'm, I'm going to rescind what I said. Yes. But I would still invite you get some family help for this. Um, cause you're right. You know, you, you can't tell one kid and not, 
or have one over here and not, you know, there's the little network within the, within the kids. So, so I, I would, um, I, you know, I would invite you to get some professional help and support, you know, to guide the process and, you know, and to help them help support the kiddos in all of this too. And you, so, um, okay. Next question. Um, uh, four months from discovery is a betrayed partner. Um, both my partner and I have an APSAT and a CSAT support and coaches as well. What betrayal trauma responses are expected and healthy in the beginning? My partner has announced that his boundary is that I can't yell at him. The moment I raise my vo voice, the focus shifts from what he could have done better to how I need to be better in the moment. Am I supposed to remain regulated when he's screaming at me? I caught him in another lie or in, or he is disrespectful. I didn't yell like I like this before discovery. I raise my voice or yell after a trigger, a trauma trigger. If he responds to me pointing it out with defensiveness, gaslighting, deflection, or apathy, I'm always the one who has to soothe him even, oh gosh, even before discovery. He has rage issues for which he is about to see an additional therapist. My um, MO is that I usually turn my anger inward and don't express it. So I'm trying to find a healthy balance between finding my voice and being healthy. I, 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 like I am going to start with this. How manipulative. Everybody deserves healthy boundaries. But to me, this one feels like he's being really manipulative. And you guys are only four months. And so um, Dr. Agib has said for partners, and he says it a little tongue in cheek, but you know, your job for the first, you know, 12 to 18 months is to be angry, you know, and, and, and it doesn't have to be angry at him, but at his behaviors, which, you know, but, but this feels really like, you know, Tamara, you know, you can't, I did all of this crap to you and you're trauma triggered, but you're raising your voice. And so you have to stop. That's one of my boundaries. Well, you know, what is the consequence of his boundary? So-called boundary, you know, like, what is it? You this feels like, you know, what the purpose of boundaries is for safety. If the goal of the relationship is to move for, towards each other, this would be shutting everything down. You guys have a whole bunch of therapists, you know, and, and honestly, he's the kind of guy that would really benefit from our residential treatment program because this feels like those deeper issues. So we've got a 14, 21 and 28 day length of stay for men. And it's not just to stop the problematic behavior. We've got lots of guys who have stopped that, but they're still, you know, they're still struggling with all those um, underlying issues. So, so I, I will put the link for our treatment program in, but, but you guys have a whole bunch of professionals. Somebody should be saying time out. This is so not okay. So Tamara, what are your thoughts? I mean, you know, without hearing more of the story, I mean, it feels a little Darvo, you know, this, we're, we're kind of flipping the victim and the perpetrator stuff. Um, so I, I, I worry about that. Um, I worry Fair. about, I worry about having those conversations, um, at all right now. Um, and what I would say to that is both of you guys might be having feelings or reactions, you know, and, and you said that he had, he rages. So, I mean, there could be, you know, he might've been, that could be old trauma. That's not yours, um, that, that he needs to work on. And I'm glad that he's going to go see an additional therapist or, about that. Um, but I do think that there is a place and you guys can find the safe wor word that if either one of you guys are feeling like that, that kind of heat come or the, the anger, um, to say the word, it can be anything, you know, pause, hot potato. Um, can we stop for a second? Um, and possibly can we stop for a second turns into, we might try again in 30 minutes, it might not work. And then we may end up saying like, this might need to wait until we go see our therapist or until you talk to your therapist or I talk to my therapist. The only, the only thing um, that I would say to you, and this is coming from um, me. Um, so I'm a redhead um, and I am uh, fiery. Um, and if I am saying my fight, flight, or freeze, I am fighting all the way. I don't even care if it's a dragon, I'm coming at him. Um, so I, and I don't know where I got it. I, you know, I've done lots of therapy. I'm pretty sure I got it. But when I felt anything coming up that wasn't right for me, I would go into, and it didn't matter. It could be small, big, whatever. I would go into this rage where I couldn't even think I was so angry and I'm spewing words. Um, 
I made a decision that there was no one in my life that I was going to give that kind of energy to anymore because it wears me out. And the other part is I really want to be a good human. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to do my best to stay in my own integrity. I want to be of the best character that I know how to be. Does that mean I don't ever raise my voice? Absolutely not. But if I realize it and can reel myself in, I will pause, I will mute, I will take a deep breath, I will get ice, I will do all the things that I talked about earlier, not because I don't, my, my anger is not valid, not because they may, may not deserve some of it, you know, deserve some of it in the moment um, to me, but because I don't want to act in any way that is going to betray me or make me feel bad about myself later, or that I'm, I'm going, I, I'm also a little prideful, so I don't want to have to go clean up either. Um, so if I can stay in that place, um, I using I statements um, and, and the, the, the perfect little sentence in some of this stuff is when you, okay. So Tammy, when you asked me about lunch, then I, and I'm going to say, I went to a place that we used to go to before um, of these arguments and, and that wasn't called for. And what I should have said was, I didn't go out to lunch. I stayed in and I ate at home or whatever. Um, because the, the, when you, and you're going to use a fact, when you, whatever, when you yelled, when you questioned me, when you, whatever, then I, and I'm going to go to my feeling. So um, that is, I don't know that that's going to work in this case because you said raging and he's yelling back and he's being reactive. Um, but what I would tell you is, if you cannot have a conversation that doesn't look any different than yelling, I don't know that I would be trying to have those conversations at home. I would get some training wheels with therapists, you know, for a little while and then, then maybe try again. And the other thing is, um, I don't know how much I would be calming him down and being his like go-to person after he raged at me. Um, that's just, that's just kind of my, my feeling. I would tell him he should call a sponsor or a support person that right now you're just not the person who needs to do that. And he, he will have to figure that out. I mean, because at some point, how can you keep being there if this is how it keeps being? And then he's going to have to figure it all the way out. So, um, take care of you. <laughs> I guess that's my point and, and allow him the space to take care of him. Yeah. And I think that's the manipulation is not only do you shut down your, your anger, you go into caretaking for him. I mean, it's a, it's a great little strategy for an addict to not have to take responsibility for our behaviors. It's like, look, look what I can do. I can, you know, what well, you're being mean to me. Oh, sorry. Let me, no, no. I love what Tamara said. You know, you take care of you. I'm going to permit you to call your sponsor, call your coach. You got a coach, you know? Um, but yeah, this is a, that's a very uh, destructive pattern and you know, who's going to pay the price you, you know, you, you will have, I mean, I can't tell you how many partners have um, uh, all kinds of medical conditions and, and things because cancer. of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's real. And it's real. Um, so you take care of you, you know, and if he goes, but what, no, I'm, you're an adult, you've got all these resources, I'm gonna go take care of me. You know, I am the only per like, I know for sure, the only person I can take care of really is me, you know, in all of this, I can, and I can control my actions and reactions. Those are the, that's it. I can't control anybody else, you know, I, it just, it, it doesn't work. But the more I'm taking care of me, the less reactive I am. And, you know, and the rage, you know, I mean, probably some shame, you know, I mean, you said it comes up when you're trying to share something, but, but you guys are really early in this process. So that would be, you know, future conversations. Like those are the things talk with your qualified therapist with, you know, uh, like, but I, I, this will probably keep happening. He's, he doesn't have enough skills. You know, if addiction is a maladaptive coping mechanism, he's probably been doing this since before age 10, mm -hmm. you know, so he's young from that standpoint and reasoning with a, you know, toddler doesn't work, you know, kind of yeah. use that. I'm trying to reason with a toddler, not working. So, um, and I'm not like, we're addicts, we get it, you know? So I'm, yes. I'm not, I'm not being mean to addicts. I, I want everyone to have healing, you know? 
Okay, last question. Betrayed partner in early recovery, we both have therapeutic support. I want to reach out to my partner's recovery coach in a CSAT with my partner because I'm concerned about how much my partner lies, leaves out details, exaggerates other things. Is it inappropriate for me? How do I go about this? The stories he paints of what's going on inside him and for him day to day and how arguments go down between us aren't reality. It's surface level or incomplete. I'm concerned that he won't get effective support because he's not being truly vulnerable or honest. Welcome to addiction. So I get, you know, I get the partners that reach out before clients come to us. Well, he lies. We know we, we expect that, you know, we do that peer case consultation group every week. We talk about the, you know, addicts lying. So um, if they're a qualified, you know, you said it's a CSAT, um, but a good CSAT is going to ask for collateral information, but I would invite you to consider are you trying to control his therapy? If the therapist is, you know, and and most can listen, even if there isn't a release, hopefully there's a release. Um, but yes, most you know, will have you in for, you know, a, a collaborating, you know, information, you know, this is what I'm seeing at home. Oh, well, he's saying something different when he's in the office, of course. And of course, addicts, you know, we want to look good. We want everybody to you're doing such a good job on your recovery, you know? So, but, but the, the key to this is in early recovery that, you know, like I it was just sharing with somebody, I forgot who it doesn't matter, you know, that recovery, you know, we talk about two to five years of doing this work. Some say three to five years. I prefer to be a little more optimistic. And I do see people that get some pretty steady, you know, uh, help, mm -hmm. but that means for partners, you got, you know, if you're taking care of you, you can be watching and seeing what your addict is doing, you know, uh, but can it be slightly expedited? Sure. I mean, I really do believe that the guys that come to our residential treatment program work through lots of years of therapy mm -hmm. in a shorter amount of time because we're looking holistically at things. Yes. Guess what? It still is going to take time. They're not going to be magically fixed after they leave us. They still need more time. And, and guess what? Recovery is a lifelong thing, you know? I've got decades of recovery. I still do the work because I don't want to miss out on the good stuff of life. Going back to something that is irrelevant. And, and, and again, seeking integrity. We strive for integrity. Tamara's right. Karen said, tell the truth and tell it faster. And it was about whether you took out the trash or about, you know, what you did, what it, going to lunch. I mean, it doesn't matter. We, you know, we can have our go-to be lies. So turning that around and being intentional and think, you know, Dr. Rob said, you know, I, this is a while back, but he said, you know, like there's a pause, you know, like when we're talking and we both talk fast, but there'll be a pause. And, Cause I like, I'm thinking through what I want to say. And that wasn't how I used to be. It would always be, you know, and, uh, and having the ability to go, you know, is that going to help this situation? Is that going to, am I saying my truth? You know, I don't have to shut myself down, but, but it's also is, you know, am I saying this? Um, what's the saying? Uh, you know, do, if it needs to be said, do I need to say it? And if I say it, can I say it with kindness? You know, it's one of those things too. I have to think about how, you know, when I'm saying something, am, am I the one that needs to say it? Now you're asking a specific question and I would hope, you know, um, his, that you could be invited into a session. Dr. Rob talks about this a lot. You know, it isn't every week and it isn't just a, you know, hopefully you're also going, I'm seeing these positive changes and here's some concerns. And, you know, I'd like to know what the treatment plan is. I want to have a little more information, but there's a fine line between, I want to do this and I, you know, I want to check in and make sure you're going to cover all these things, you know, and, and, you know, again, you're, this is the long haul, have the, have the, you know, this is the marathon, not the, you know, 5k. So, yeah. Any thoughts on that? I know we're yeah, way my, past I mean, I'm so I, sorry. I, I, of course, because I, you know, because I am a therapist um, and because I am a CSAT, I, you know, and I'm going to go on the opposite side, just a little bit of that with than what Tammy said on just on this part. Um, number one, I think that we get what we put in. 
Um, and I think that we figure it out as we go along. And I think that as we're figuring out lessons, really good things are happening in our brains. So when I talked about earlier, when I began to tell the truth to Tammy and I'm, and I'm meeting her vulnerably with my heart, she's leaning in towards me and now we're connecting. And so there is an, and look, I, I get it. I, I have people, I do. I have people who will email me or leave me a voicemail and they'll tell me all the things of all the things that are going on. And what my mind goes to is I feel sad for that person because they're not trusting the process. Um, and part of the process is he might lie to me. He may, that's okay. He's really lying to himself. He's not lying to anyone else in the whole wide world, but himself. Um, but I think that I do a pretty good job. I'm not going to tell you that anyone that, that someone's never gotten over and like always held the lie, but I have really good intuition. I listen really closely. I I move fast. I think with my heart. I don't know a ton of stats and all that stuff, but I will tell you, I I can get a feeling. I can feel it in my gut, and I know most of the time. I know if the story's match not matching or not. I mean, once you've done this for a little while, you. I'm not saying every story is the same, but you really can begin to get a feel of what this looks like. Also, I was an A1 addict. I mean, I, I could lie and throw down with the best of them. I always got what I needed and I knew how to do it. So there's a part of me that it's like, I know that I can, I can, you know, spot it, got it. I've had it so I can spot it. Um, I'm not saying that you couldn't let them know if there is something what something that's really got you concerned but as a whole if you are not trusting the process I would think is that because of the CSAT or is that because your partner's still showing up with some behaviors that don't make you feel right that's where you got to really check in with you because ultimately he can tell me the whole entire truth in the whole wide world he can tell me every single little tiny white lie and everything he's ever done all of it. And I will hear it all. I will do my best. I will cheer him on. I will give him the directions and he may still act out. So controlling the therapeutic se um, sessions, it really does you no good. It really does you no good. In couples, I think that is where you get to do it. You get to bring your voice in. You get to see what you're experiencing. Um, but being concerned that he won't get the effective support because he's not being truly vulnerable and honest, I think there's still some healing that, that needs to go on there because it's not up to you to make sure of that. And it's, no added early on can be vulnerable. I mean, like, oh my God, that's terrifying, you know? So, right. And, yeah, I wasn't being vulnerable. Yeah. I wouldn't be vulnerable yeah. to anyone. I was afraid they were going to take everything yeah. away from me. Yeah. You know, and I that took time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so, so this is early the trust recovery. The process one. I, I'm, I'm sending that with all the love in the world, but trusting the process is really, really big. And when you trust you, you can trust any process because I've always got me. Thank you, Tamara. And I'm sorry we ran over, but thank you. Yeah. No. I wasn't even paying attention to the time. Okay. I, well, and I, so, I wanted, and I would have wanted to answer every, you know me. Yeah. Well, I so the questions. sometimes we have like a bunch left. So, okay. So thanks everyone. Um, Angela was going to do a special edition webinar on, um, uh, I got to think on Thursday of this week and uh, her little town has been decimated. So uh, she has no power and no internet. So she's not doing that. We will reschedule. Um, uh, so watch the schedule. Things are changing rapidly, you know, with different things. But, you know, for those of you that know Angela, she does host the um, Sunday night group and also facilitates the um, uh, betrayed partner work groups for us. Um, and so please keep her and those that are struggling under that storm um, uh, in your good thoughts and prayers. So, all right. Thanks, Tamara. Grateful. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye.